fact, it kind of jumps out here. It says that when King Solomon was dedicating the temple, he sacrificed 22,000 oxen. That's a lot of gulalo. That's a lot of oxtail soup. That's a lot of anything. 22,000. I was just calculating in my head. And it seems like that if Solomon was sacrificing one ox every second, it would have taken him about 14 hours. Right, uh, every one a second. Now, now, but it actually takes a lot longer than one second to sacrifice an animal. It's not just killing them, then you have to drain the blood, then you have to skin it, then you have to burn parts of it. It's a complicated process if you look in other parts of the Bible. <coughs> Not only did he sacrifice 22,000 oxen, which would take him more than half a day, he said he sacrificed 120,000 sheep. Now that is a lot of shawarma and a lot of pork chops. Can you imagine that would have taken several days if he were doing it by himself? Even if it were one per second, and you can't do it that fast. And yet the Bible says he did it. So how did he do that? My guess is he had some help. It says Solomon was doing the sacrificing, which meant they came from him. He's the one that offered them. But there were probably a lot of priests and a lot of Levites and even maybe some of the people were helping in all of this sacrifice. It does say in the next sentence, the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. So what I think we can see from this amazing fact and this huge numbers and all of this bulalo and shawarma and everything else going around, when people work together, you can do a very, very good job. That's kind of what happened. A lot of sacrifices were made because many people worked together. And I think we can probably learn something from that in our own lives. When people work together, you can get a lot of things done, a lot of important things. When it took Solomon, who was ready to be generous and give all those animals to sacrifice to the Lord because something very, very, very special was happening. The house of God, which had been promised for more than a thousand years, was finally <coughs> dedicated and existed. And so that was a very special day. We can kind of look forward to this and see something that will be happening with us one of these days. So who's ready to offer 120,000 sheep? Anybody got that? Okay, 22,000. Ah, we can do that, right? So remember Solomon when that day comes and uh, be grateful to the Lord. Another amazing thing, kind of on a different uh, move, even more amazing than that, kind of shocking really, when we look at the gospel reading, we see people actually spitting in God's face. Can you imagine spitting on God? God. That's what they did. They did that to God. <laughs> then it says they blindfolded him and punched him. Beat him with their fists. Can you imagine doing that to the Messiah? To the Christ, to the Son of God? And then it says they slapped him in the face. Can you imagine slapping God's Son in the face? Slapping God himself in the face. Think about that for a while. Sometimes we read things and don't think about it. These guys actually were punching out God and spitting on God and slapping God. Wow. What was going on there? One amazing thing from there is Jesus didn't fight back. That's how merciful he was. Because as he said later, 
Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And that's the whole point. If they knew they were punching God, I don't think they would have done it. I don't think they would have spit in His face if they really believed that was God. Because they did not believe. They truly, truly, truly believed that Jesus was a fake. They just knew in their hearts He wasn't who He said He was. And so because of that, they were able to do these terrible things to Jesus. Now what I wanted to bring to us is sometimes we are so, so, so sure that we're right. Or sometimes somebody that we know, so sure that they're right. They have everything, you know, all figured out. They know exactly, they, they just know all the details. They have it right. And sometimes we're not right. Like these people here. So sure that Jesus was a fake, but they were wrong. Because they were wrong, they did some terrible things without even knowing it. And what we should learn from this is we should be careful about the things we do and about the things we say. Because sometimes we can be so sure that we know the right answers and we know the right thing. And we can, I can treat this person anyway because they're so terrible or whatever. And maybe sometimes it turns out later, we weren't right after all. We should be careful about how we treat other people. We may think they're so bad that they might turn out to be different. We must be careful about our attitudes. We're not always right. These guys were so sure they were right. But they were not. We should also be careful that maybe some of the things that we're so sure about, maybe not. The one thing we can be sure about is the mercy of God. Even though he was slapped, even though he was spat upon, even though he was blindfolded and punched, he still loved those people that were doing that to him. He still said, Father, forgive me. They really don't understand. They don't know what they're doing. Don't hold this against them. That's what we can be absolutely sure of. God's mercy, even towards those who don't love them. That we can be absolutely positive that we're right when we say, I know God loves everybody, even those people who don't love Him. If we see anything else in this story, we see that. But let's just remember these, these things. Remember be careful and remember to uh, understand we're not always right. So let's be careful in these things. Make sure we don't do something that uh, ends up coming back to being so always remember though God's mercy is always there for us. Okay? Amen.